to speak them, uh, to, to explain them the rules. Uh, it doesn't matter that in Hungarian or in English. I don't know uh, what is the teaching system for coaches in Israel, but uh, so I don't know if uh, they are, uh, they have lectures about the rules or refereeing. Uh, I can tell you that in Hungary, practically there is nothing. Unfortunately, several times I proposed uh, to the uh, president of the coaches commission in Hungary, that uh, please uh, give information about the rules and the refereeing to the coaches because it would, in this case, uh, there would be less stress, less uh, problems on the matches. Until now, uh, my, uh, my initiation was not, not effective. So I don't know what is the uh, system in, in, uh, uh, in Israel. But uh, let me ask, uh, if, if I can ask, uh, who knows what kind of uh, documents are, uh, are prepared uh, for the rules and, and the refereeing? Of course, the rule book, this is <clears throat> our first Bible, okay. Uh, anybody can tell from the coaches what are the, the, the documents, what are the materials do we have more? Or it's better to, to tell normally and, and not, to, not to ask a question. So we have all together three documents. We have rule books uh, containing the basic rules. It, it's, uh, it have only the, the, the rules. We have guidelines uh, with the instructions how to apply the rules. It can be modified in every year or in every two years. So all uh, temporary uh, regulations can be, can be put into this material. And we have the case book, the third one, uh, which has uh, actually about 100 cases, most of them uh, including videos. So these cases, uh, uh, are explained uh, in this in this casebook, and, and it's a good, very good tool how to apply the rules uh, on the matches uh, by the referees. I have to tell you that uh, uh, all rules are still complicated. However, our intention in FIVB in the last uh, 10, 20, uh, 15 years, we have intention to simplify as much as possible the rules, but we have still uh, complicated rules. Uh, let me compare you that in uh, when the volleyball was invented, the very first part, the very first period, the rules were written one A3 page, no more. Today we have about a, a, a rule book with 80 pages. So uh, uh, it's very complicated. Uh, I don't know that, uh, I, I don't say that uh, we have to return to the the uh, first period to the A3 page. So let's go further to the to the next slide, uh, what we are talking about today. Uh, with Roy, we discussed a lot about, uh, about the content of our uh, lecture today. And uh, we agreed that uh, to speak about everything, it would be two, three days but we have approximately one hour. So we had, we had to focus uh, these, uh, these topics what are uh, uh, in the first slide. Uh, something about uh, the cooperation and communication between the coaches and referees, which is very important for us. And some uh, problematic rules uh, to, to review. And at the end, uh, some questions and answers uh, can be given if you have questions. Okay, let's go further. To be honest, uh, the referees and the coaches will never understand completely why. And if I can uh, ask uh, the next bullet, because uh, the coaches want to win their match in any way, in any case. However, the referees has one, must have one goal that's to let uh, the better team to win. And it's written in the next uh, bullet. So several times uh, uh, the coaches behave like a lion, like an attacking lion against the referees uh, during the match. So we, we 
try to uh, we try to to insist to the referees that uh, uh, as much as possible to eliminate the conflicts during the match and mainly after the match. I saw several times that the losing coach after the match, uh, even the referees were on the court after the match, leaving the court, attacked immediately and uh, tried to protest, tried to argue uh, with the referees. Uh, this is one of the, wor the worst uh, image for me, that uh, the participants, except the players, attack uh, and, and uh, have, a, have a fight uh, on the court. It is true that uh, uh, what is uh, written on the, below uh, the slide, our common goal is to serve the volleyball in our position. So it doesn't matter what, was on the, what is on the match, uh, what position we have uh, on the bench or on the uh, referee's chair, we need to serve our beloved uh, sport, beloved uh, discipline. Let's go further. Uh, if we compare the actual volleyball uh, to, the, to the volleyball, for example, 30 years ago, uh, we can state that uh, as the world has been changed, the volleyball changed as well. So if we uh, see the how the life is, how the world is, we see in the life, in the social life, uh, aggressivity. Uh, the life is very fast. And we need excitement. In this case, the volleyball has to be the same. I say always that, uh, that the sport, for example, the volleyball too, it's like a mirror of the social life. So if we compare the actual volleyball uh, to, the, to the 30 years ago, we have more dynamism in our game, we have more aggressivity, and we have more attractivity because the, the people like to, to, to watch this. In the past, there was, uh, the volleyball was uh, a passion for two times six players playing and playing volleyball. They play for own or enjoy. Today, the volleyball should be an attractive, uh, exciting show. I'm talking about the top volleyball, not uh, the lower level volleyball. So the top volleyball must be a show and entertaining uh, the spectators, it doesn't matter than inside or in front of the, of the, of the TV. Yes, uh, we have four participants of the show. We have coaches, before the match they are very friendly. We have referees and we have a third one, the spectator, the fans. And don't forget that it's intentional layout of the slide. The most important participants are the players. Uh, they must have the main role in the show, what should be uh, provided during a volleyball match. So we, we never understand neither the coaches, nor the, nor the referees, and nor, the, nor the fans, nor the spectators, that they have the main role. Okay, let's go further. I say always, uh, Every, every participant has their own job. The coach instructs, directs the team. Uh, the referee must, must uh, whistle, must decide, and the, vol and, and the fans uh, uh, enjoy the match. Uh, in my opinion, the show is perfect when every participant has their own perfect job. Uh, that is the key of one of the key of the success. Uh, for example, the coaches, because this is a lecture for the coaches. The coach activity on the match to conduct our team, of course, and they are trying to influence the referees. What does it mean? Uh, several coaches told me that they they try to find where are the limits, either the technical things or the behavior. What what the, the referee uh, on, on the actual match allows to do for the participant. 
because you know, you should know very well the referee's uh, approach or or uh, the understanding of the rules and application of the rules are different when he whistles on a on a lowest match, for example, uh, min, mini players or junior players, and different uh, when uh, the match is on the, on the, on the top level. So every day, every match has different limits. And the, the smart coach uh, realizes uh, the limit uh, determined by the, by, the, by the referee and he stops. Uh, the non -enough, not enough smart coach uh, doesn't keep this limit, oversteps and sometimes uh, being surprised that he or she sanctioned, penalized. So let me propose you to to realize where is the stop. Okay. What is the ref referee's responsibility on the other, on the other side? We insist always the referees to be behind the scenes because he must understand that uh, the, not the referee the, has the main role. But as written on the slide, it's necessary to show where is the limit. Where is the limit of behavior? Where is the limit of, of uh, technical things? One of the worst referee, if, for example, regarding the ball handling, he keeps in the first set very high level, very strict, and after that, in the second set, the limit is going down, and after that, in the third set, going up again. So the, the players, the navigator, the coaches, they don't know what to do, how to do, how to play on this match. So we insist always the referees try to keep a stable limit, stable uh, line on the match. On the other hand, on the other hand, uh, the referees has to try to understand the coaches and the players. Uh, understanding these reactions from the other side can, uh, can drive him to, to decide more smart, more smart way. Uh, in some situation, uh, he should whistle. In some other situation, when the, the, the different, uh, different condition, uh, uh, not, not, not to whistle, not, not to, to, to decide. The referee must have a kind of empathy towards uh, the coaches and the players uh, during the match. Uh, unfortunately, we still have room to improve regarding the communication and, and the behavior that uh, the referee admits our mistake. Several uh, referees has no no feeling how to communicate. And uh, several referees still think that they are kings or queens. Uh, they have uh, the stone, they have the stones of, of, of wiseness, they know everything. So they, they, they decided uh, finally and no chance for complain, no chance for, for question by the players. So we try to, to change their mind and I'm, almost sure that the top referees already understand what is their role, how to behave uh, during the match, uh, and uh, they have a, a, a nice uh, progress uh, regarding this. The lower level referees are more, uh, are more uh, problematic. Okay. Uh, I think it's a very important uh, sentence. Cooperation and communication is a key point of success, uh, practically in every teamwork. And because uh, the volleyball refereeing is it's a kind of teamwork, so uh, we need to communicate during the match. Uh, what can be, please, next one, if I remember well, yes. What kind of uh, situations can have a, a conflict point, can be a conflict point during the match? when the referee's decision is not clear for everybody. Uh, not because the referee's decision was wrong, but the other side, the coaches or the, or the players, they don't understand the rules. Uh, they don't understand the reason of the decision. By the way, uh, in the bracket, in Hungary, we have a, a regulation that uh, all top teams participating in the first division 
are obliged to nominate one player or one person to, to make a basic referring course to understand, to know the rules better than before. And it's, uh, it works uh, quite well. Uh, I realized that uh, uh, there are less, not, not, uh, very, uh, not very much, but a little bit less problem, problems uh, on, the, on the matches uh, after entering uh, uh, this, this system. And we have more basic referees who can be more, who can be uh, good, uh, good referees in the future. So it's, it's not a bad idea, bracket closed. Uh, during the match, uh, strongly, strong, strongly require the, the communication uh, by the referees. And uh, let me show you some examples with good examples and uh, with some bad examples. Let's go to, to Umit. Uh, let's repeat again because uh, the situation was uh, a served ball and the ball uh, landed close to the to the end line. The, the left coach already complained because the line judge uh, showed something wrong. And look uh, to the first referee. Uh, he, react Im he reacted immediately to the coach's uh, reaction. And he showed that, the, hey boy, I saw the ball, I decided well. And if something's wrong, I will overrule uh, the, the, the signal of the line judge. So the communication was immediately done between the third referee and the, and the coach. And the coach realized that, okay, the referee is in his, uh, make, uh, makes his uh, job correctly. Raised hand, okay, I realized, so no problem, let's go further. So, with this uh, mutual communication, without any card, without any whistle, just slight jest, uh, the first referee uh, showed where is the limit, and uh, uh, he expressed his ability, his authority to whistle uh, to the, and to decide correctly. Let's go to next one. Yes, this is a totally different attitude by the referees, by the first referee. He called the game, two game captains. And in this situation, it's obligatory that the first referee explain his decision or explain where is the limit or is stop this behavior. Instead of doing this, he kept the whistle in his mouth without any word, just to make calm boys. And the, and the boys didn't understand well, didn't understand nothing because of the whistle and, we don't, and, and there was no real communication uh, with the referees. So I think it's a very bad uh, example and, and I hope that the referee colleagues uh, never uh, follow this. And there are another type of uh, referee. We can realize that uh, close to the antenna on the first referee side, there is a big mistake done by the first referee. Why? Because there was an attack and the ball went to the antenna from the block and not from the attacker, not the spiker, as the first referee called. And of course, the, the coach uh, was immediately uh, angry. The, the biggest problem is that the first referee was also angry when the uh, game captain was there. And it's absolutely unacceptable. In such situation, the first referee has the, has the job to, to explain his decision or to communicate with the colleagues to realize if his decision, if the original decision was correct or not. And in this case, uh, he would have to, be, have to, uh, to change his decision. Instead of making angry face and uh, almost uh, attack the game captain, who was only asking what happened uh, in, by this decision. So uh, fortunately, this uh, referee is already finished. So uh, and, and hope uh, no other referee will follow his his example. 
So these are uh, different attitudes from the referees, and I hope that uh, the first example will be followed uh, most of, by most of referees. So let's go further. What is the actual FIVB intention regarding uh, the coach's behavior? We have, we know that uh, we have very too much uh, a tem very temperament, sometimes aggressive coaches in volleyball. This is the truth. And they want to steal the show which should be provided by the players. So they behave against the, the opponent, they behave against the referees or the jury. This also happened, you can see on the video. They show root conduct and uh, the FIVB's uh, leaders, they don't want to, to see such a behavior on the match. So we try to eliminate and uh, it's true that the show cannot be stolen by the match. Let us see some examples uh, about different coaches. The first is uh, a Brazilian Italian coach who is a real Mediterranean person and who wants to be in the court as much as possible, to be in the team as much as possible. And uh, his behavior like, like, a, like a seventh player without ball. So if we go, uh, if, what is, what is the, the most important in this uh, attitude? He is never against the referees. He does everything to help the team, but own team, and he's not against the opponent. So uh, it can, be, it can uh, be allowed, why not? It's a part of the show, and if there is not against the officials, no problem, let's, let's him do it. Okay, I think uh, he is uh, one, or, is one example on the world, so I've never seen such a similar coach. So it is a little bit funny, and his, uh, his style is nice. Most important is not against the officials. Let's go, the next one is Zé Roberto the famous Brazilian coach. This match was played uh, in Brazil ten, in front of 10,000 uh, Brazilian fans. And uh, Paul was soft. Look at uh, the, the coaches, the home coaches, Zé Roberto. He feels like a king at home in his empire and went into the, went, entered uh, the court, uh, showed the ball is something is wrong, blah, blah, blah. So the first referee has no chance to, to intervene, nor the second referee. And what is the biggest problem? Now it's coming. He, sh he went to the referee delegate, showed the ball, and this, react, and this action is still not finished. Look his face. It's absolutely unacceptable. Neither for home uh, coach, nor, from, nor for anybody. And the problem is that the first referee had no courage to give a strong sanction against him because yellow card is nothing. I suppose later a red card would be nothing. So this uh, behavior is very close to the, to the aggressive, attractive uh, conduct, which requires a red and, and, uh, and the yellow card in one, in one hand. But the first referee uh, had, no, had no courage. I asked her uh, later on, Yes, he, he was not enough brave heart. In front of 10,000 10, uh, Brazilian uh, fans, she was lost. So this behavior should be eliminated by FIVB, uh, although he's uh, from Brazil. And the next one is Vital, a twice uh, world championship winner coach of the Polish team. This match is a VNL match 
And uh, let, let's stop uh, uh, in this moment, Alex. Uh, the ball was rebounding close to the spiker's uh, shoulder. It was not clear that the ball touched the shoulder or not. You should know that uh, this situation cannot be challenged. It's true. Uh, what a good coach or a normal coach reaction in this situation. He asked uh, a challenge for the ball touch. Let, let, let's stop again. So normal coach ask uh, a challenge for, for this uh, situation and referees will explain to him that it's not allowed. It's not on the list which can be challenged. The clever coach, for example, Vital, realized immediately that this situation cannot be challenged, but uh, it can be challenged antenna touch. And for antenna touch, uh, and such a camera can be used, which can watch, which, which can demonstrate if the ball touched the shoulder or not. He was enough clever, immediately decided to request a challenge for antenna. Okay, let's go further. So this is the surrounding of the situation. So it's normal. This is one important point. Uh, of, the, of this uh, situation. The second point, second important point, that the first referee realized, or he, know, he knew, that if the camera shows only the antenna touch, uh, the touch of shoulder cannot be shown if he wants to keep the challenge uh, regulation uh, letter by letter. In this case, uh, a potential mistake was uh, remains in the match. But what was his intention? He asked the challenge operator and the challenge referee to show the complete procedure from the moment when the ball was close to the antenna until the moment when uh, the, the ball touched or not the shoulder. And it was uh, really uh, uh, demonstrated the ball really touched the shoulder of the of the players. So the first referee took his took the risk to uh, to lose one challenge by him because it is discovered uh, that he made a mistake uh, during the decision, but no mistake remained on the match. And the third point was Vita's behavior. Uh, after the uh, before before the, the the challenge, can we go uh, back a little bit? Somewhere here, yes. So until now, Vital's uh, behavior was more or less acceptable. But what after he shows? I hope. It's... No, let's go further. Let's go back. Let's go back. Sorry. What you say, sir? The most, uh, protesting, protesting, protesting. Now this is to show uh, the eyes and uh, the English expression. What he what what he said? Yes, this one is unaccept. It's already unacceptable. So uh, this kind of rude conduct and not only uh, unsportsmanlike uh, behavior. So uh, at the end, the first referee issued a yellow card, but in normal situation, it should be a red one. So Vital was over the limit. In uh, any case, uh, after receiving the yellow card, he was uh, applauded by the home home fans he was he 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 became like a hero because he gained one one point to to his team although he received one yellow card which is nothing so uh, 
this is also a kind of behavior. And, and uh, to be honest, Vital is a very smart, very clever coach. He knows very well the rules. Out of match, uh, we can discuss, uh, we can communicate with him uh, normally, absolutely normally. Uh, but uh, when the first referee whistled the first on the match, uh, a pink fog is in front of his, uh, his, his eyes and sometimes he's lost on the match. So that's, that's all from about uh, Vital. Uh, I, think, uh, I think this is the, the, the first part, the end of the first part. If anybody has question or, or just a remark, comment uh, for this part, I think uh, it's, it's a good, good time. What is your opinion, Alex? Oh, let's go further. I have, I, I have, a, I have a question. Yes. If uh, it's okay, uh, you said that uh, the the show cannot be stolen by the coach. Sometimes uh, the coaches feel like the the show stolen by the referee. This is the first uh, first thing that I want to say. And the second uh, the second one, uh, it's feel like some sometimes it's feel like that. Uh, the referee acts for uh, with one coach different than the other coach. A coach with a big name, a big a big name coach uh, that uh, uh, he acts different than uh, a new coach or something like that. If if I if you understand what I why what I'm trying to say, absolutely understand, and uh, I can tell you only our intention that uh, to insist the, the, the referees to understand that they are not in the middle of the show, not in the center of the show. As I told you, as I, uh, as, as uh, on the slide was written, the referee must be behind and only if it's necessary to step ahead. So if a referee doesn't understand this uh, this role. He's not a good referee. Do you understand? So uh, I can uh, I can provide what we. Um, how can I say? I can tell you that our intention is this, but we cannot guarantee that the referees apply into the practice what they heard from us or from the Referring Commission in Israel, or from the Referring Commission of CEV, or any other body. So I'm 100% sure that the leaders of the, of the uh, Referring Commissions, they understand uh, what to require from the referees. But it's not a guarantee that it will be applied in the practice. Uh, the second remark uh, from you, I fully agree with you some referees who has not authority, not a personality, who are afraid from big names of, of coaches, uh, they, they really a different uh, way, uh, hand, they handle different way, uh, different coaches. And this is also a big problem. I fully agree with you. Uh, I can tell you that uh, it's also our intention to to eliminate this, that to, to, to handle uh, the different people different way. Try to be uh, cons consistent for, the, for, for both teams. Uh, uh, let, let, me, let me ask, uh, did you communicate with these referees after the match in normal situation, not uh, when, the, when the referee uh, just whistled, just uh, finished the match. So after the match, no, in normal situation, did you communicate with him and ask him, "Hey, boy, you are not a, not the king. You are not the main role. You are not the main role. Please get back." And if you did, what was the the reaction of the referee? It's a difficult difficult question because uh, <laughs> probably. Probably when the coaches feel that the the, the referee stole in the game, it's uh, in the end of the in the end of the game in the end of the set, and uh, you feel very angry about it. So you can, when you when you try to talk to the to the referee after the game, it's 
most of the time I think it sound not good so you cannot I think you cannot get a an 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 answer and a good answer from the referee because they think you are uh, trying to attack him or something like that I'm talking about the normal situations normal situation for example uh, uh, during the seminar before the seasons where uh, Referees are there, coaches are there, and to discuss about this this topic. And believe me, uh, before several seasons, we have a seminar for the coaches where uh, one member of the refereeing commission uh, gives a lecture about the rules about the refereeing. And to be honest, uh, such questions raised up also in Hungary, what you mentioned, and I took always information. I learned always from the, from the coaches too about such situations and I try to transfer to the referees, hey boys, you are not the kings and, and, and so on. So uh, try to insist them to, 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 get, to get back. And also about uh, the, the rules, uh, coaches has such a questions which I, I can, hmm, why not so? Why, why? And, and I try to to, to transfer to the, to the commission in FIVB, hey boys, it's better to, to revise this, uh, this uh, rule because it's uh, problematic for the application for the coaches and, and etc. So what, I'm uh, what I wanted to talk, communication between the referees and the coaches is very important. Enormous situation, of course. Uh, I tell always the referees, uh, when there is a, uh, after the match, uh, if the losing coach is angry, and he tried to attack you as a referee and start a blah, 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 you were stupid, blah, 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 blah. The best referee's reaction is that, sir, now I have administrative task closing the match. When I finished, after 10 minutes, 15 minutes, I'm in your disposal. 99.9% .9 of the cases, the angry coaches lost already the the atmosphere in the in the in the brain he's already uh, with the co with the players in the dressing room evaluate the match maybe complaining about the referees but doesn't return uh, with angry face to the coaches to discuss and fight so uh, in this case the referee and of also the coaches uh, won the small fight and, and they they eliminate the fight which is not uh, good and in front of the spectators so Again, communication, communication, communication. And, and I, I cannot guarantee nothing. <laughs> Just what, what, what we do is this the referees not to be a king or queen. But Susanna is not a, not a queen, so no problem. With, with her is nothing. Okay. Anybody yes. else? Any more uh, comments? Okay. Last question, okay. we'll continue. Okay. So in this case, we can go. Uh, I made a small comment. For the last couple of weeks, we've been talking to different referees and having internal discussions. And one of the things which always comes up is these seminars prior to the start of the season, where referees and uh, or representative of referees and coaches met. Unfortunately, uh, in here locally it doesn't happen too much and we need to establish this thing as a permanent uh, you know permanent situation when you always come before the start when they have uh, the possibility to talk a little bit to educate a little bit to have a common ground between the coaches and the referees especially in the top league before each season so good good idea Wait, I, I i have a suggestion if, uh, yeah. if i can I, I work usually. I work as a as a scout, uh, and not. A, I, I, I'm also a coach, but in the first league, I work as a scout. Uh, I film all 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 the game that uh, I'm uh, working on them. And uh, none of the none of the Israeli referee, except one, I have to say that uh, asked me for the video to see how how we act in the game. Uh, why? Why does uh, it's not uh, we the coaches are film the game, 
most of them, and try to learn from it, why does the, doesn't the, the referee do it also? Uh, I'm 100% sure that the Israeli Referee Commission is enough wise to, uh, to take uh, videos about the matches and then to analyze and to, to instruct the referees, uh, not only the, the, the referees who are on the, on the video, but all others to learn from these videos. I'm 100% sure, but it's not my responsibility to express this, this feeling. So it's Alex or, or I don't know who is the responsible in this moment. We'll take it offline and we'll continue this discussion in our local meetings. Thank you. There is a point and I know about referees who do uh, do recording from home, especially for the televised matches and we do watch them. Just don't uh, go to you as the statistician or the scout uh, to ask for the video, but that's okay. Uh, let's continue. Uh, let, let, me, let me add something again, a Hungarian example. Uh, in Hungary, in the top league, uh, all teams are obliged to make a recording about the match with a certain uh, specifications behind the end line, uh, high, high definition, blah, blah, blah. And they are obliged to put on the website, onto the FTP server of the uh, Hungarian Federation. I, as the president of the Riffling Commission, has the right to access to these videos to download and uh, if I heard some something happens with capital letters uh, on a match, I download the match, uh, I cut and sure it will be analyzed either during the season, for example, a video questionnaire or before the next seminar uh, uh, before the season or on the next seminar before the, before the season. So. Uh, we profit the, the modern uh, tools, uh, uh, videos, and, and, and so on in the education of the, of the Riffling Commission. And I'm sure that uh, in Israel you do the a similar, but of course I'm not responsible to, to express this. All right. Okay. So let's go to the to the rule to the uh, exact rules to, to the to the professional things. So uh, I suppose that uh, the most important actions occur uh, at the net: spike, block, uh, net touch, uh, penetration under the net uh, to the opponent court. So the referees should focus very well during the match during the match during the rallies when the ball is close to the net. This is the one of the uh, most important uh, duty of the referees. And if they focus well, if they are concentrated well, they can uh, judge correctly, really, uh, if any, uh, any mistake, any fault was committed uh, close to the net. What uh, to consider when they judge if it was legal action or not? The position of the ball, the direction of the ball and position of, of the hand. These are the three main topics what uh, uh, he should quickly analyze, evaluate and decide. And you know well that uh, uh, among the ball sports, the volleyball referees has have the most difficult uh, job. Why? Because every ball handling must uh, analyze, must decide if it was legal or not. And several times, for example, when the ball is close to the net, a uh, very small period should, a uh, very small period uh, has to decide. You understand? In football, not so quick decision. In basketball, in handball, no problem. But in volleyball, the referee's job is very, very difficult. And you should understand as coach that uh, it's not an easy job. Several times I propose uh, the coaches who, who are attacking the referees, eh, you are stupid, blah, blah, blah. Please uh, go and sit to the referee's chair, try to whistle one, uh, one training, one or two sets, and you realize that it's not so easy, not so easy job. 
uh, as uh, from the coach's bench uh, seems to be. Okay. So uh, something about the rules. Uh, uh, you know well that any front row players have the right to touch the ball, although above his own court. So to play the ball uh, above the own court, there is no limitation. Let's go further. To spike or the set in the opponent space is a fault. It's always a fault. In the opponent space, only blocking is allowed. To spike or the set, to, to retrieve the ball uh, above the net uh, from the opponent's court, it's not allowed. We can uh, call this uh, situation, what is, what is shown uh, on the photo, the neutral space. The neutral space means that the, the ball is cut by the net plane. So it's absolutely above uh, the net. In this, situ in this uh, ball, what, what is above the, in the neutral space, uh, any front row players has the right to play. Okay, let's go. Yes. In this situation, if you see uh, the, the yellow nine, uh, number nine, her, her finger is the, is the crucial point when we decide uh, her action, if it's illegal or, or legal. The red player is no problem, own space, but uh, the number nine is a little bit doubt. So this is the uh, neutral space where both the players have the right to, to play the ball. If the fingers are uh, in own space, okay. We have, uh, let me show, let me demonstrate these situations uh, in two very similar examples. In both cases, a spiker versus opponent setter is shown. Susanna, hello. It's clear, let, let us stop, please. Okay, the black player's uh, hand is in own space. The ball is in black uh, players, black teams uh, space. So in this case, when the red, when uh, the red middle blocker, middle spiker, hit the ball in the opponent space, uh, she commit a fault. Okay, it was a real penetration or reaching over the net. So absolutely correct decision was. Let us see another one. It's also a setter versus spiker. What is the difference uh, between the, the, this situation and the previous situation? The position of the ball. Here the ball is uh, like cut by the net plane. So the ball is in the neutral space. Uh, this ball uh, is, uh, can be spiked by the white uh, spiker because it was in the, in the neutral space. However, the black back row setter uh, looked very well at the fingers in the opponent space. Yes. So in the moment when the, back, when the back, uh, black uh, setter hits the ball, immediately commits a fault. And it doesn't matter that after the spike, uh, he committed also a back row block, but uh, this, uh, this fault was already the second one. So if we go back uh, to, the, to the beginning of the, of the video, we can see that the secondary free shows it was a illegal back row, but theoretically, it was a wrong decision because the first referee would have to whistle uh, a penetration over the net. Okay, so uh, what I want to tell you, so in the, uh, uh, the position of the ball was different in the two uh, situations and this was the base of the, of the uh, decision. In both situations, uh, the referees uh, uh, decided well. Uh, 
Yes, a crucial point uh, was the position of the ball. And let's stop uh, a little bit uh, uh, in this point. Uh, if you test that uh, different persons take a seat in different position of the, of the stadium, of the hall, uh, and after the match or after, this, after the situation, uh, these people are asked what they saw, what they have seen. Maybe they, they tell us different meaning, different point of view. So what I wanted to tell you, that uh, the same situation from different points, for example, uh, from the referee stand and from the coach's uh, position can be seen, can be, can be judged a different way. So mainly, especially in such situation when the ball over the antenna, over the, the, the net, very close to the net, uh, the first referee and the coach can have different idea what happened. So don't be surprised as a coach city, uh, standing five or six meters from the net, you have different uh, opinion than the first referee because the first referee is in the uh, uh, plane of the net. And uh, let us believe, let us trust, trust him that he decides correctly. And don't uh, start immediately fighting against uh, the coach. It was uh, penetration, blah, blah, blah. Let us trust, trust him, okay? Thank you. Blocking, uh, reaching beyond, uh, Alex, uh, yeah. did, you did you change uh, the titles? Yes. Yes, I did. In this case, I'm a little bit confused. Okay, let's go back. <laughs> okay. So uh, uh, the title should be uh, should be uh, attack hit versus blocking, because uh, on the slides uh, maybe my instruction was bad. Sorry. So uh, attack, uh, where to execute? Uh, uh, attack hit allowed only within own own playing space, including of course the the neutral space. Uh, what I was talking about. However, the block. Can be uh, can be done uh, beyond the net too, but what is the crucial point? Only after the uh, uh, finishing the attacking uh, opponents opponents attack hit. Uh, it's not allowed with the, to to block with the reaching uh, uh, hand uh, to block the internal pass. Which, uh, which, uh, which are parallelly uh, to, the, to the net plane or the setter uh, set the ball uh, towards the, the own end line. So this, uh, these balls cannot be blocked, cannot be blocked. Or, uh, for example, a second hit or, or the first hit, there is no player close to the ball who is able and about to play it. So, there is, there, is, there is nobody uh, to play the ball. And of course, uh, we can uh, block uh, in the opponent's face after the third hit of the opponent. It's normal. Okay, let's go further. We have two uh, examples. And uh, what I want to, to explain Several coaches and also several referees are not able to distinguish who has hit the ball first, the, the, the reaching blocker or the attacker player. For example, the attack, uh, the blue team and, and the blocking team is the white one. In this case, the white blocker clearly hit the ball first. So it was an illegal reaching block. This is the crucial point, who hit the ball first? And I don't remember if the first referee decided or not. Probably no, doesn't matter. 
let me show you a legal reaching block. And uh, to demonstrate, what does it mean? There is nobody from the attacking team is able and about to play the ball. The ball is enough high, this ball is enough high not to rebound from the top, top of the band. So it is sure that the, no white player has chance uh, to play the ball rebounding the net. And there is no jumping player trying to ball the net, uh, to, to, to play the ball in this case. This situation is legal by the penetrating block. So the, the referee's uh, decision was correct. Okay. Several coaches has, and also among several referees, there are misunderstanding how to distinguish uh, attack hit and blocking. Uh, what is the situation which is uh, misunderstood? When uh, a gift ball is coming from the opponent and one player jumping, do something uh, with the hand, hit the ball, the ball rebounding from the net, from the top of the net, and the referee has to decide if this ball, if this action was block or attacking action. I would like to, to give an explanation how to distinguish the two, the two situations. Our approach, our act, actual approach, when there is an attacking uh, action, the player makes a backswing with one or two arms and after that attacks the ball. Meanwhile, during the block, the hands, hand or hands are almost stable. There is no backswing. The player's intention is to intercept the ball coming from the opponent. We can see uh, the two different uh, situation. We understand very easy how to distinguish uh, these two different actions. Let us see the first, the block. Look at the, the Holland player's hand. The, did you realize any backswing? I'm talking about the number 18. Let us see again. It's a simple block. And after the block, the number 18 has the right to play. And of course, the opponent uh, game captain attack uh, approached the call, approached the first referee, uh, complains very strongly because uh, he didn't realize it was a real block. I'm 100% sure that this, this situation happens in, in his team, he never complain. Uh, what was the level of the communication of the, by the first referee? I'm a little bit doubt. Uh, okay. And uh, if it was if it uh, was necessary to punish uh, the game captain's code, game captain's uh, behavior, mm, I'm I'm not sure. But the the crucial point of this uh, video was not this, but uh, to demonstrate the block blocking action. Let us see a different one. It's absolutely fresh. I hope that uh, we can demonstrate uh, the number 15's arms movement, that it was a real, yes, it was a real attacking action, backswing. So it was the first team hit, and after that the team uh, hits the ball three more times. So in this case, it was a four hits. I hope that the four touch. touches. It was four touch because the first hit was not a block one. One, two. Two, yes. The set is the third one. Three and, and the spike. Because, uh, because the first hit should be considered as an attack, as a spike, 
as a first team hit and not a block. So the first 50 uh, applied bad the rule. So he, he, was, he had a misunderstood, misunderstanding. So uh, let me stop. Uh, if all coaches, uh, for all coaches, it is, is it clear already what is the, in such situation, the real attack and what is only a block? Ori. Is it clear? <laughs> because I saw, I see you all your your name. Sorry, on, on the screen. Is it if, clear? If, if I use my uh, my uh, my hand to do this, it's a block or, uh, it's, a, or? it's a block. It's a block. So uh, within the commission, this is the really a, a new approach, and we agreed uh, to distinguish the, this situation, these two uh, actions, on this way. So if it's clear that I try yes. If the player used a backswing and attacked the ball, it is a spike, it is an attack, it's not a block. If the player intercepts the ball, it doesn't matter that with the hand, it's a, uh, if I heard, if I remember well, this is the active block, yes, active block with a with little bit moving hand, yeah. but it's still. Oh, I didn't understand. I'm sorry. No, somebody okay. talked. Uh, we just muted them. Yes, uh, a women voice. So anyway, if there is a more or less stable arm, but the maximum moving hand to be act to have an active block, it is still a block. Uh, I, I I can understand that when it's a, when somebody try to tip over you and you do it and it's active block, but if you are alone on the net, I don't think it's an active block. Like like in the, like in the last like in the last uh, position when when he tried to spike if if he do the if he do uh, active block it's not an active block because it's not blocking anyone uh, okay. this, is, this is very easy very and very demonstrate uh, with the approach of the of the moving arm or not it's clear all right hey. let's, con let's okay. uh, continue Okay, not touch. You know, we had an influx of uh, people joining the the meeting because probably they missed uh, took the hour, the Israeli time versus the Central European time. So instead of uh, joining the meeting now, before uh, at se at seven Central European time, they're just joining now. Okay, here I stop. Okay. okay, can we go further? Yep. Okay, the next part of the, of the problematic rules is the net touch. Uh, again, uh, I have to repeat that uh, among some referees, there are some troubles uh, with the net touch. And I'm 100% uh, sure that uh, not the actual text, not the actual wording is the final version of the net, net touch rule. The net touch rule is uh, on the slide. Uh, uh, the, the principle is that uh, between the antenna and during the action playing the ball is a fault. The first sentence is uh, valid for the unintentional net touches. I, I have to <coughs> mind because all intentional net touch should be considered as a fault. Uh, regarding the unintentional, it's a crucial point that between the antenna and during the uh, action of playing the ball. Uh, what is the what, what is considered as uh, being action in the playing the ball? Uh, for example, a jumping player from the takeoff hit landing safely and ready for a new action. If the player uh, has a stable uh, position on the on the court and after that, for example, uh, turning to the to the end line and waiting the uh, looking uh, uh, the 
next action, next action of, of, the, of the teammates. And during this uh, movement, uh, slightly touches the net, it's not a fault anymore. Okay. Uh, we'll show a video. Uh, yes, and uh, let, me, let me add something. Uh, practically, we teach the referees that uh, if the ball and uh, the player touching the net is close to each other, uh, it's a fault. It's a net fault. Uh, in this situation, uh, the number 12 is taking part a fake attack. Uh, during this, uh, the number 11, the setter, could uh, give the ball to the, to the number 12 and uh, to the position 2. So in this case, uh, when the number 12 hits the net, he is still part in the playing of the, of the, of the ball, in the action. So in this case, uh, his net touch should be considered as a fault. And he, he admitted, okay, I, was, I, I touched uh, the net. It was a good decision. Coaches, do you agree? Then, uh, regardless uh, which team's coach uh, you are. Okay, I was talking about uh, the intentional net touches. Pardon? Okay. So uh, I told you that all intentional net touches are fault. It was a, a very scandal match, European uh, Championship qualification tournament, uh, qualification match in Hungary against Macedonia. And let's go uh, to the video. In the fifth set, there was one, uh, Hungary is a uh, white team and uh, Hungarian striker had an action. And if we see, if we watch the action of the young, of the white, uh, of the yellow uh, setter, we realize that uh, he tried to mislead the referees, the opponents. He intentionally hit the net. So you see, and it would have to be called as a fault. Unfortunately, none of referees realized this. It was a big scandal. It was fifth set, very close to the, to the end of the match. So all, uh, I underline all intentional net touch. It doesn't matter that the player was in the action of the playing the ball or not, is a fault. Okay, uh, let's go further. You know, uh, This video is, ta uh, is talking about uh, how to make uh, some players a trick. Because the rule says that uh, if the ball is coming from the opponent to the net and through the net touches uh, the player, it's not a fault by the player. But this rule is valid only for, for the players who is standing neutr a neutral position. For example, uh, from a ball, strong ball, uh, protecting uh, the face or any part of the body. But if the player is looking for the, for the ball and intentionally hits the ball through the net, it should be a fault. It's not uh, only one player on the world. I saw several times uh, this action. And I would like to ask uh, the coaches participating here not to instruct the players to do this and to don't be from the from the back camera. It's much more better to watch. Look, the number ten is chasing the ball, and after that, try to mislead the referees. The referees were, uh, the referee was was enough uh, clever to realize and immediately call uh, the fault and. The game captain also understood that it was a correct decision. Okay. Any comments? If no, let's go further to the penetration. 
which is, uh, if I heard well, uh, it's also not uh, so clear among the coaches. So uh, let me uh, divide the, the, uh, in two parts the body. The first part is uh, above any part of the body above the net. With these parts, uh, we can touch the opponent's floor, opponent's court with a legal action, provided there is no interfere with opponent's play. With the feet, we have some limitations. Let us see if the foot or feet has a contact with the center line or above, above the center line, it's still a legal play legal action if the foot is completely touches the opponent's court it's already a fault let us see one very interesting situation and if i ask ori to analyze the situation of the brazilian national team setter if it's correct or not what is your opinion? And why? Can you, can you show can you show it again? Yes, of course. There will be no mistake. Who votes it is a mistake and who votes it's not a mistake? And why? It's a it's a mistake. Both of the legs, just uh, his arm left le, was in the is a court. Uh -huh. Who votes it is not a mistake and why? Nobody has courage to speak or nobody has courage uh, to, to say against Ori? A referee or a coach? Coach, please, coach. Please, coach, please, coach. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody? Uh, you, you, have, you have to know, in Israel, I'm the king. Nobody can say against me. Okay, I'm in a brave heart. So again, to say against you. So if there is no other vote, uh, let me explain my approach. And I'm saying it's not a fault. Why? What is written in the slide? Uh, all parts of the above the, above the foot is uh, allowed to touch the court, the opponent's floor. Okay, let me ask which part of the of the body has hit the, the opponent's court, the, the back side. Yes. Uh, if the foot or feet touch the, the court or not? No. And there is another rule that under the net, between the the net and the floor, this is the external space, we can uh, penetrate, we can reach in, we can reach, provided there is no interference with the opponent play, opponent player. So my question is, the foot uh, was in the air, yes. And it is allowed that the foot under the net, not on the court, under the net penetrate, uh, into the opponent's space, not opponent court, opponent space. That is the reason that because uh, part of the body touching the floor was above the, above the foot, the foot didn't touch the opponent court. So in this case, there is no reason to call a fault in this situation. And if there is not a reason, why to, why to whistle? I was enough uh, impressive, Ori? <laughs> uh, yes. Okay, thank you. I convinced you. You, you are I a go. good referee. No, I, uh, I fight always several, uh, with several uh, smart uh, referees. Sometimes I was convinced uh, and more times they were convinced by me. So I'm enough, I have enough experience. Okay. Uh, and uh, I suppose this is the last part of the 
wonderful of the, of the presentation yes yeah uh hits with overhand fingers i suppose this is the one of the problematic actual rule in the in our in our volleyball yes this is overhand fingers uh, why because uh, there are two very difficult uh, topic in the life of the refereeing to judge the ball handling immediately when the action was done and the second is the discipline we were already talking about the discipline now we are talking about the, the, the ball handling. So it's very difficult to, to make the line according to the, to the actual match, according to the level of the, of the players, because it's, it's, it's a stupidity that uh, we keep the same uh, approach as the top volleyball and uh, on the mini volleyball. So we have to apply our, our line to the, to the actual uh, match and it's uh, not uh, always easy uh, i have to tell you that uh, what is written in the slide perfect hit perfect uh, overhand fingers hit does not exist why because if we have a camera with high speed with very high speed and we make it uh, we, we, we we play it in slow motion overhand finger pass we can uh, distinguish the first hit and the second hit by two different hands. So it's a theoretical thing that the two hands hits the ball in the same moment. This is the theory. So we can we cannot realize uh, with the with the human eyes. So uh, what is insisted to the referees if in over and finger pass they see that the hits are two different two different uh, time was, was made this is the double fault but uh, what is clear for everybody if it cannot be uh, realized let them play the second point is the spinning ball effect uh, several coaches uh, several fans several spectators uh, after a uh, overhand finger pass, when the ball is spinning from the hit, immediately try uh, crying that, hey boy, it's just a double, you're a stupid referee, why you didn't whistle? Let you take a ball, go in front of a wall, throw the ball to the wall, and look if the ball is spinning from rebounding the ball or not. I'm sure it will be it will spinning and my question is if the ball can make a double fault or not so what I want to tell it's not sure that if the ball is spinning from the from the heat it was a double or not it cannot be a base of, ju of the judgment so please uh, let you remind so as it uh, written on the slide only the clear double hits should be whistled uh, what is what may cause uh, trouble for the for the people uh, if there is a nice defensing defensive action and based on the on the rule a strict referee can whistle immediately a double let us see uh, what i want to tell on the right side the holland holland player this one make a slight double it is it is clear it is clear and immediately the game captain went to the first referee smiling okay but to be honest he was too strict because it's written also in the guidelines as i mentioned in the first part of the of the presentation that if a player should uh, should make a, a big effort to reach the ball if the player is not in a good position and makes a slight double the first referee has to be less serious, less strict. And to be honest, uh, we would like to eliminate somehow this, uh, this approach and to, in, to let them play in this situation. Maybe in the future uh, will be done, we will put into the, into the rule book 
but actually uh, this rule is still exists. So I suppose uh, I finished my, my slides. Now it's your turn again to, to attack me with some questions, if you have. But Alex, don't forget I have uh, the last uh, slide, so. No, I will. Let, let, I let, us, let us return. Let us return that. So if anybody has a question. Uh, I just I just want to add something, if if, if I may, uh, to the coaches and uh, to everybody. We tried to find uh, some situations that we witnessed more uh, arguments and more problems with the coaches during the match. Some of them were the net touches or all the plays that is, were running close to the net, uh, penetration, and the double hit. So we tried to bring here the rules as they are so that you can understand. Um, and like, like uh, Mr. Herpai said before, a, a good coach knows the rules, but not just the rule book. There is two more books to know, to understand uh, the plays and, and the rules themselves, and then to realize what the, what the referee whistles about. And this communication, when you understand what the ref referee whistles, usually will help also to understand the fault or uh, anything else. And that's those specific situations that we witnessed and we feel that were the most uh, problematic for, for the coaches and the referees during the matches. We tried now to, br to bring clarification to these rules so that everybody would understand perfectly uh, for the next uh, experience and matches. Thank you. I agree with you, Roy. There is a question from the crowd. Uh, Christian asks, uh, good evening, is it possible to have presentation in mail or video? Uh, we will uh, put uh, the recording on uh, recording on uh, Drive and we'll provide the shareable link so you'll be able to listen to it. As far as the presentation is, uh, Laszlo is your, your call. So okay. no more question. Everybody understand everything from the next day. I, 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 have, I have a question, of course. Oh, of course. I, I, I'm asking. Uh, can you explain the difference between the the first referee and the second referee who watch what? in the game who who would who decide what who who watch for the net who watch for the rotation who watch uh, for the if the ball pass the, the net or not pass the net or uh, it's uh, clearly written in the guidelines and in the rule book too how the tasks of the referees are distinct are uh, divided the first referee has to has to follow the the pass of the balls uh, all the time, and to judge the ball handling uh, uh, where the ball was uh, falling uh, on the on the floor, in or out, etc. <coughs> Meanwhile, the second referee concentrates uh, to the net, the net uh, to the uh, illegal net touch and the and the center line. And there are a lot of tasks which are uh, uh, belong to both referees, uh, and both referees can uh, can whistle uh, if they realize the fault. For example, the faulty net touch. For example, the penetration. For example, the the faulty uh, back row play, uh, etc. So it's it's clearly uh, written also in the rulebook, also in the guidelines. So I recommend you to ask uh, Roy Goren to provide you these both uh, documents. No problem. Or to ask him exactly what are what is the, the task sharing between the referees. And it's good to know because uh, several times I saw several times that the coach uh, pro start to protest at the second referee about the double or about the catch. And the second referee has nothing to do with this. So in this case, uh, 
ask the, the game captain, please go to the first referee and ask uh, him or her why was this decision not to whistle or to whistle. And hopefully the explanation will be correct. All right. Uh, our friend Ari Jokanainen, probably from Finland, asks if uh, you think, uh, Laszlo, it's a good idea to meet be, uh, be, meeting before the coaches and uh, referees uh, before start of the year. Do you think it's a good idea to meet with referees and coaches before before or end of the season? Both. Both. For, uh, before the season to give instructions uh, what uh, are the referees instructed and after the season to analyze the season's experience. But the question is uh, what uh, level of, of uh, so how on which level to, to make this meeting uh, with the representatives uh, of the coaches and, and the referees or representatives of the commissions. So it's in detail, but in detail leaves the, the devil. So the main question, I prefer both, if possible. Okay. Uh, from what I heard from a, a friend of mine in Italy, uh, Stefano Cesare, he told us that uh, in Italy, they have for several years already meetings uh, before the, uh, the, the start of the season. When there is the meeting of the coaches, uh, they invite the chairman of the refereeing commission, uh, Fabrizio Pascali now, and he gives a, a lecture to the coaches uh, on some topics that he saw that were uh, problematic in the last season before, and some uh, topics and everything that uh, guidelines that he will give to the co to the referees uh, for the upcoming season, and they have another meeting uh, just before the playoffs when the referees of the playoffs have a meeting and they invite two coaches from the first division of of those uh, teams who are going to the playoff to uh, to lecture in front of the or talk to the to the referees. Uh, about topics they are expecting from the referees uh, to do or to take notice during the playoffs. So there is an interaction between uh, referees and coaches uh, in all levels of uh, Italian uh, volleyball. He said it's, uh, it's been already done for several years. At the beginning it was quite uh, difficult because both parties were very stubborn and, and didn't Want, they had a very strong ego and nobody wanted to change the mind or to listen to what the other, the other party was saying. But after one or two meetings like that, they had uh, the tension was lowered a bit. It helped to, to make a more uh, productive communication between both sides. And he says that not just uh, the coaches have things to learn or to hear from the referees, but also the referees can learn and hear from the coaches and to know uh, what the coaches are expecting and to help uh, to have better communication. Thank you. Okay, but I told you communication, communication, communication. And there is a question from Christian Cristea from uh, Romania. Romania. A question from Mr. Herpai. Yeah. I saw a lot of second referees which are following the balls during the action instead of watching the net. What is your advice for a second referee to act in a proper manner in order to don't miss the net touch, net mistakes or actions? First, to ask more uh, nomination as second referee. Because the, the best referees are mostly nominated as first referee and they forget how to work as second referee. Second advice, try to, as second referee, try to focus better uh, to the net. And uh, when the ball is close to the net, when the action is close to the net, concentrate. Uh, train and, and try to train to do this. Uh, maybe not uh, in one moment to, to concentrate when, when you train yourself uh, not to not to do overall everything but step by step for first in the first part concentrate better to the net and after that when it's working well 
concentrate also to the center line. So step by step, uh, extend your your uh, concentration. Uh, especially, it's valid for the starting for the newcomer uh, rippling because uh, the the beginners uh, uh, they don't know they don't know what to do, especially a second rippling. Sometimes also top rippling don't, they don't know, but uh, it's another question. And uh, if I may, if I may, just a small comment, it is much more difficult to be a second referee than the first. It's true. Okay. Mainly, mainly Anybody else, guys? Nice? All right. Last slide, Mr. Herpine. So, uh, finishing my lecture, yes, please, the last one. I hope uh, my lecture was a little bit was useful for you, and uh, uh, it uh, may help uh, to feel better the two parts, the referee's parts, and then the coach's parts uh, on the match, and uh, they shake hands instead of attacking the the referees. And and uh, I hope uh, I told you something new or something, uh, or I confirmed uh, your knowledge, and I'm ready to, to return if you, if you think it was, it was useful, and then uh, it will be my pleasure again to help you to understand each other and to understand the rules. Thank you very much for the invitation. Mr. Okay. Herpai, very thank you very, very much. It was a really interesting session for everybody, and uh, I know that uh, all of the person here will speak around their country that uh, it was a good meeting and everybody will help uh, another referee to understand, another coach to understand and uh, how you say, let's cooperate together and the volleyball will be better for fans, for uh, nice games and a nice situation. And uh, I hope all the people here are well and the family are well and the uh, Thank you also for Roy and Alex and all my friends in Israel that participate and help for this session. And for you again, Mr. Herbert, thank you very, very much and hope to see you again, not in Zoom, <laughs> but in the court <laughs> around Europe, or around the world. And uh, we hope it will be soon and uh, everybody will feel well. Thank, thank you very you. much. And I'm sorry, Mayor, just before you close. Alex, yes. Susanna, Susanna, put up a questionnaire. Excuse me, guys. We have put up a questionnaire. Uh, polling questionnaire for everybody. So we would like, really like to hear your, there are sim simple questions about the, uh, you know, about what we talk, discussed or some other things that we want to discuss in, in other meetings. It's mostly for the coaches, but you are free to answer. Please answer those uh, questions. Okay, sorry. Yes, Nash. Only for, only for coaches, yes? <laughs> yes, only for coaches, especially for coaches. Especially for coach coaches. Anymore, yes. Okay, best regards for all of you. Sorry, let's uh, let them run a little bit more. Nine people, ten people out of thirty-eight. We are now thirty-eight. At the peak, we were forty-six people at the participants at the meeting. Robin Simon is driving. It was excellent uh, lecture, dialogue, whatever you want to call it. It was excellent to understand a little bit your side. And I hope uh, for the Israeli referee, hope to do it again, uh, not on Zoom to, as, as, as we talk here, we have to do it more than uh, once in a lifetime, one in a corona time. We have to do it more every year for, for me, I think. And uh, I think also for you, it would be good. If I may say, if the coaches will ask to make some a seminar like that, we in the commission of the referee and Liga and uh, Games uh, rules will uh, make a seminar for all the coaches, no problem. We will. Okay. <clears throat>
So uh, one third of the participants uh, answered our questions. Thank you. I will end the polling now and uh, show the share results for everybody. So now we can see it's uh, oh. anonymous. So now we can see what was answered. The number two uh, can give a lot of work for the people who are creating these materials. And you see, as you see, it's either mandatory or will help a lot. Yes, will help a lot. This yes, work is the very helpful work and uh, for everybody. We can all yeah. learn from it on all sides, Teach, uh, coaches, players, and of course, referees. Okay. Last line, last comment. Thank you very much again for inviting and see you next time. Ciao, all Thank the best. You, bye. Thank you very much. All the best, bye. everybody. All Thank best. you, Laszlo, for. Bye bye. See you soon. Hi, Susanna. Hi, Susanna. <laughs> bye, bye. How are you? <laughs> Thank you. Fine. <laughs> Bye, Susanna. Oh. All the best. All the best, Hello. Arturo. Ciao, Susanna. I'm done. Ciao. 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 How are you? Ciao. Hi, Arturo. Ciao. Ciao. How are you? Long time, I'm afraid. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. I hope to see you soon. Yeah, of course. Uh, ciao, ciao. Ciao, ciao. Ciao, ciao. Bye bye everyone. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you very much.